It's frustrating. I, for the life of me, I cannot understand how these people are being successful. They're at 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> how? How is this happening? Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. So I want to warn you, this episode may be a little controversial. I'm not sure how it's going to be received. Some people have told me this is a topic that I shouldn't talk about. They don't think that it should be an episode. So I want to warn you, this episode is going to have a little bit of conspiracy theory, maybe a little bit of conjecture. Hopefully it'll have some facts. It's going to be long. It's going to have a little bit of frustration. And I want to be clear, no one is a victim here. But sometimes you have to talk about unpleasant topics to kind of understand what's going on. This is something that I think should be talked about. This episode is about YouTube versus my boat building. All right, today is January 17th, 2023. And I thought what I would do is film a status video for the channel. And uh, status by status video, I mean, what's the status of the channel? And I thought it would be an interesting kind of uh, thing to track uh, how the channel's doing and my thoughts as a creator and kind of going through this whole YouTube process. I thought it would be interesting to kind of see this over time and uh, I'll do one of these videos every once in a while and that way I'll have something to look back on and maybe it will provide some direction or some interesting conversation about how I felt back then versus how I feel now and going forward into the future. I just think it's kind of interesting thing to track. So I, uh, it'd be a very simple video. I'm just going to talk to the camera and, uh, maybe we'll put up some graphics here with some numbers, but anyway, um, this will be the first one and we'll kind of put this in the can and we'll hold on to it. And then maybe I think I will do this again, like at the one year mark. Okay. So that's the premise. That's me back in January 2023 talking about my YouTube channel. I was at about 135 days in. This is me in October 2023. I'm at about 400 days in talking about me talking about my channel. And you can see I'm watching myself on the iPad so I can comment on the things that I said back then. All right. So right now, and I'm just over four months in doing the YouTube thing. I retired from my day job, a career, uh, 25 years in February of 2020, 2022. And I started the YouTube channel. Uh, my first video was September 4th, 2022. And, uh, so right now we're at about 135 days doing the YouTube channel. Uh, I work on my boat and I do some videos and that's my job. That's my day job. I do it every day. Uh, I spend about half my time in the morning working on videos and the other half in the afternoon kind of working on boat projects. Of course, I'm filming the boat projects while I'm doing them. So I got uh, five questions and I'm going to ask the same five questions each time I do one of these videos and kind of see how my cha answers change over time. Maybe it might be interesting to compare and contrast them. So, um, so the first question is, what's the status of the channel so far? That's the first question. So the cha the status of the channel so far is just some sheer numbers. The channel has been up and running about 135, 135 days since I posted my first video on September 4th. Uh, I think the channel was created on August 31st, but I didn't post until September 4th. I was getting all the graphics and all this stuff done. So right now the channel has 1,000 42 subscribers and almost 50,000 views. So that's, and the actual number is like four, 49,616 views or something like that. That's for the whole channel. I have approximately, I want to say I have approximately 54, 56 videos, but a good portion of those videos are shorts. Uh, that's the YouTube shorts, the short format uh, for the phones, for the mobile phones. And, uh, but, and I have a, about 20, 
uh, one episodes that are published right now, but I have another four or five episodes in the can. They're already done. They're just waiting to be released. And I'll talk about that, why I'm doing that, kind of pacing things out. Um, so the, you know, the, st uh, the status of the channel is, uh, I think it's good. Uh, I think it's growing. It's not growing as much as I would like. Uh, I think we hit a thousand subscribers very fast, very early. This is primarily due to uh, some a nice shout out from Andy Miller at Boat Works today, his, his YouTube channel. He said some very nice things about the channel and a lot of people came and looked at my channel and subscribed to it. So that was very su successful. Just to bring you up to speed, my channel now has over 2,100 subscribers. I've produced a total of 102 videos. That includes the full-length videos and the YouTube shorts. I've made just over 50 long-form episodes talking about my boat project. I've got over 134,000 views total to the channel. And a new kind of benchmark I'm measuring is how many Patreons I have. Right now, today, I have five Patreons who donate to the channel to keep it running. Not bad, we're moving along, but stick with me because it's gonna get messy. So I've watched a ton of YouTube videos. We'll, we'll talk about all that, trying to learn how this whole thing works, but all indicators are that the channel is, is good. People like the content. I get a lot of positive feedback from people saying how much they like it. I have regular reoccurring subscribers. They watch every episode, they comment every time. Um, Larry and and Bob and uh, Tony and uh, uh, Andy. There's quite a few people, and and they. Uh, it's really nice to see the same people, kind of commenting. They really get a kick out of the videos. They're learning something. Some people said some very nice things that the channel provides information that they really haven't gotten anyplace else, and they really love it. Uh, they like the format and things like that. Um, so, you know, that's uh, very nice, and, uh, but, the, but the actual subscriber growth is not steady. I probably gain a subscriber, one or two subscribers every day, every other day, uh, but not consistently. I tend to gain uh, subscribers when I release videos, and uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a short or whether it's a full video. In the beginning, shorts, brought me subscribers. As I released a short, I'd get a subscribers. As I did the episodes, now it's transitioned to more episodes, I tend to get subscribers. But it's not a lot, it's very tiny. It might be 10 per video. Uh, the, the traction in that regard is very, very light and it really depends on the topic of the video. And we'll, kind of get, we'll get to that in a second. So, so on a health scale, how would I say my channel's doing? I, I, I think, I think it's I think it's moderately healthy, but I think it's not doing everything it could be, uh, I, and I don't know what more to do. I've got the thumbnails ironed out. I've got the SEO ironed out. I've got uh, keywords and hashtags ironed out. I've got the content I think is ironed out, and the editing is all fine. Things are quick. Things are tight. It's all very punchy. Um, we, the quality of the audio is okay. We've sampled, we practiced with a variety of things. And, and uh, so I, I, I guess it's good. On a scale of one to 10, status of the channel, five, maybe. For, for, for my uh, opinion, I, I would say a five. Uh, uh, I think we could be doing better. I, I just don't know how. I would agree with my assessment. I think the channel is pretty healthy. In fact, I, I would go so far as to say, it's even healthier than it was back then because now the channel is kind of growing every week more than just one or two subscribers at a time. Growth is still directly tied to the number of videos that I release and how often I release them and frankly, what the topic is. Softer topics seem to do much better than the really nitty gritty how to on some complicated projects. But we're pulling down five to 10 subscribers, maybe a day on a good week, depending on what the topic that week was. This is all good news for the channel. My most popular video to date is 10 Rules of Amateur Boat Restoration. One of my second most popular videos is the Pilot House sailboat conversion for the Compact 19. 
Obviously, we've got a new sailboat that we might throw in the mix as an extra project. That was not by accident. All right, question number two, tell three things that you've learned so far. So three things that I've learned so far are, the first thing is that, you know, I really thought that I could make a better YouTube channel. I thought that I could make a better YouTube channel and everybody would want to watch it. I thought, I thought if I made the content better, if I did the better camera work, if I did better editing, better sound, better graphics, better explanation of boat projects and, and uh, even just the documenting how kind of the thought process is going about it, that the content itself would somehow drive the growth and popularity of the channel. And I would say that that has turned out to not be true. I would say that uh, uh, it really does not do much for your channel. You you might have a better, you might create a better widget, but but in YouTube world, it doesn't really matter because the standard is so low across the board for for all the other YouTube channels out there and the content that's being put out there. Just because you make good content doesn't really mean anything. There's there's some other things going on behind the scene. And uh, people will say, oh, your channel's fantastic, it's amazing, this and that. But if no one knows about it, it doesn't really matter. And channels that are absolutely terrible quality, terrible content, just garbage, they are just rocking and rolling tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and people are just eating it up day and night. And uh, there's something else going on besides the quality of content. And that's one of the things that was most shocking to me that I learned. It, it, uh, I have experimented, you know, nobody's not watching my channel because, oh, this audio is a little bit off or, oh, this script's not quite right or, oh, I'm shouting at the camera or no one's not, no one's watching the camera, but no one's watching the show because they don't know about the show. It, it has something else to do uh, than quality of the production. All this caused me to really start investigating how does YouTube work and what are the tips and tricks for growing your YouTube channel. And while I don't think I found any actual solutions to those questions, it has caused me to delve into all sorts of online tutorials, both written and video, online YouTube coaching, all sorts of online YouTube wisdom, these kind of ideas that are put out there that, hey, you should do this. Hey, definitely don't do that. Well, I've tried all of them and I gotta say, 400 days later, I don't think any of them are working and I've kind of come up with my own ideas as to what's really going on. I eventually got so frustrated trying to crack the secret of YouTube that I went ahead and I decided I was gonna ask the people who were already in my niche space what was it that was making them succeed? Did they have any suggestions for someone who was just starting out? And to that end, I contacted about 35, 36 different YouTube channels that all have to do with boating. Now, some of them are lifestyle, some of them are wooden boat how-to, some of them are fiberglass boat restoration quasi how-to, some of them are straight up just boat building but they are all successful channels and they seem to be chugging along with their own voice, kind of making a difference in the space. I contacted each one of them individually by email and I kind of explained my situation, told them how frustrated I was with my inability to grow the channel as fast as possible. And also it seemed like there was some sort of a gatekeeping going on to how do you blow up on YouTube if someone else doesn't actually talk about you? I asked these channels and their creators if they had any suggestions for me, and I collected up all their information and put it in a spreadsheet. Now, for the most part, most of these channels were not the same ones that ended up signing my foam finger. These were different channels that I contacted months and months before I ever went to the Annapolis sailboat show. The second thing that I learned is that what you see in YouTube land, insofar as people having subscribers and getting people to be able to do things and have interactions and stuff like that, well, a lot of that is uh, not necessarily real. That, that's what I would say. And what do I mean by that? Um, so when you look on a YouTube channel and you see all these amazing positive quotes, 
Oh, your grand channel is so great. This is awesome. Oh, I love this. Oh, you're changing my life. This and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and you notice that all of the comments are positive. There's no negative comments. I would say that, uh, you know, this is not reality. There are people who are giving negative comments. They just don't get posted. Now, I will say this. I have had probably two or three comments. I've only, I've only deleted or not posted not allowed to be posted, two or three comments. And uh, one comment, someone kind of interjected religion into s s one of my video comments, and I didn't think that was appropriate. Another time, someone interjected something about the building of the, of the barn here, and they kind of disclosed up front, uh, you know, the punchline, which was how much the pole barn cost and the, and the, and the, the price of awesomeness and all this kind of stuff. And they disclose that in their comments. So if you're reading the comments before you watch the video, you already know the punchline, so you don't watch the video. I had to delete that. <clears throat> they basically gave away the, <clears throat> they gave a spoiler. So I had to get rid of that. Uh, and there might've been one other comment that was inappropriate or it was a piece of spam. You know, go to my website, get penis enlargement or something like that. So I haven't deleted a lot of negative views, but the, po the feedback has been very positive, but I think people just give positive feedback and I think there are other people maybe who don't have very good quality, very good content, very this and that. And I absolutely believe they're screening their comments that stuff's not going through because they, the comments that they have are as though people are blind watching their channel. I don't know how people could be saying, oh, this is an amazing channel when everything's fuzzy, you can't see anything. I, I just don't get it. It must be fake. I don't know. So, so what you see in YouTube world is not necessarily real. 300 days later, I can tell you, I know this to be true. I've left comments on some of these other channels critiquing the channel or what they're doing and those comments don't appear. They've disappeared. Here's how it works. The creator of the YouTube channel has sole authority to approve or disprove comments that people make. Now YouTube has its own guidelines about what can and can't be said and kind of social behavior in the comments section, but the actual creator of the channel, well, they're the one who determines, I'm gonna let this comment go through or I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove or in most cases, hide the comment. Hiding the comment means that the comment is hid from everybody else on the channel and what they get to see. It's not hidden from the person who makes the comment, they think everything's hunky-dory, but to the rest of the world, they never see the comment. In fact, they see nothing from that poster at all. This is part of YouTube's policy of anti-bullying and they don't want negative comments kind of overshadowing the YouTube experience. It's something that has really kind of grown in the last couple of years. I can tell you since my channel reached about 1500 subscribers that I've begun to receive a lot more negative comments. These range from people who just don't like the fact that I put a pilot house on a small sailboat or they wanna critique me and comment that I'm too fat to fit in a small sailboat anyway. What are you gonna do? Sure, these people you wanna remove from the comment section, they're not really helping anyone. But at the same time, knowing that anyone who provides any sort of substantive feedback can actually be removed and become invisible, well, it makes you wonder what exactly is real in YouTube land. This sort of filtering of comments or even just only allowing positive comments well, it has the effect of giving a channel the impression that, boy, everybody really loves what's going on. You're doing an amazing job. There's no critique, no real feedback of any sort. This also carries over into the thumbs up or the thumbs down. When you like a comment on a channel, well, of course, that appears. It tells the content creator, hey, I really like what you're doing. But when you say you don't like what's on the channel, you don't like what they're doing, that doesn't actually translate to anything. It used to be that YouTube channels were graded by thumbs up and thumbs down. And the channels that got more thumbs down than thumbs ups, well, they were moved down in their ranking and perhaps not pushed out there as much as YouTube does today. My understanding is that YouTube doesn't take into consideration any of the thumbs down in the ranking or how much it pushes a video out there for everyone to see. In recent years, YouTube has really emphasized keeping viewers online longer watching content. 
So they've effectively removed any sort of negative feedback that would cause you to not watch something, therefore put everything out there telling you, you definitely want to watch everything, even when you don't. But here's the problem with this. Let me give you an analogy. This would be like going to your local bookseller and you ask for a book on boat restoration. And the bookseller goes in the back, fiddles around, comes out, hands you a book, says you're gonna love it. You go and take a look at it and you quickly realize this has nothing to do with any sort of real boat restoration. So you take the book back and the bookseller fiddles around some more and then brings you another book and says you're gonna love it. You look through that book, it also has nothing to do with what you asked for. So you send it back again. And this goes on for a period of time. And after a while, you begin to realize that the bookseller is making money on you just being in the bookstore. So they really have no interest in giving you anything that you want. They only wanna keep you occupied and keep you stuck inside the store. When I search for content on boat restoration and I get reality TV next to an old boat and I don't get real boat restoration, it makes me wonder who is gaslighting who? The other thing is that, you know, I got a big bump from Boatworks Today. Boatworks Today has 208,000 subscribers. You, there was a big uh, kind of, uh, you know, we were taking odds on how many subscribers we get from Boatworks Today. And, uh, you know, it turns out that I got about 700 subscribers from Boatworks Today. But they have supposedly 208,000 subscribers. That's a lot of subscribers. So where did the views go? Well, it has to do with the formula of how many people are watching the actual video where someone says, hey, go watch this other channel. And if that video only does so much traffic, well, then there's a percentage of that amount of traffic, which is actually like a click-through rate. And they have all these terms in YouTube where a click-through rate and audience engagement percentages and all this kind of stuff. And there's mechanisms people are trying to measure these sort of metrics. And, uh, and, and so when I say YouTube world is not necessarily real, I would just say that some of the numbers that you see are not, they don't translate into a one-for-one -one ratio or even a one to a 0.1% ratio or anything like that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of other things influencing uh, people's, people's click-through rate and how much they do stuff and when they hear about things and all this kind of stuff. So, so uh, it's led me to kind of deduce that YouTube land's not real. Like there's no, there's no, there's no, there's nothing real, you know? The third thing I would say that I learned, which brings me back to my third point, which is there is no, that I can see so far, there is no logic to what's successful and not what's not successful. I, I mean, and I say that in, in so far as I have watched a tremendous amount of YouTube growth channel instruction and how to make your channel grow, how to make your channel better, how to monetize your channel, business planning, all this kind of stuff for YouTube and everything. And I followed all of the suggestions and scenarios and this and that and implemented them in kind of a rigorous approach with uh, uh, kind of results oriented to see what's what. And, and, and uh, I can see no discernible logic or cause and effect between do this and then that happens. I'll give you an example. Here's a great example. <clears throat> so you get a lot of analytics on your YouTube videos. I got a YouTube video, all my YouTube videos, I have an introduction in the beginning and then I start talking about the show and that usually lands around the 30 second mark. Okay, so when you look at my audience engagement, you will see an immediate drop off in the first 30 seconds. Now, YouTube wisdom from all the channels says, oh, your introduction is too long. You're not keeping people's attention, this and that. So at some point, I basically got rid of the introduction. I shortened everything up, slammed it all together into a very, very super tight, concise four to eight seconds long, the intro and setup. And... I still lost 30, 40% of my viewers up until the 30 second mark. It made no discernible difference. It's, 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 it's not doing anything, which tells me that there's something else going on. It's not just somebody clicking on your channel. Oh, this is boring. And they go someplace else. It's, it's ridiculous. It is, <laughs> that's not what's happening. It must be something else. Is it bots? Is it some type of automated search thing going on? Is it... 
Is it people just clicking on things? I, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but, but there's, in many situations like this, there's no cause and effect. This is very, very, very frustrating. And I'm curious to see over the next several months, over the next year, if my attitude will change. Oh, there is a hidden uh, logic to this whole thing. But right now, I'm not so sure. And, uh, and I'll even go one step further. I think there's something going on behind the scenes. I can't put my finger on it, but my investigator's background tells me that there's, there's, there's no logic to this. Something, something's going on. There's an X factor involved here, and, and I, I don't know what that is. I don't know how to impact that or get influenced in that. It seems to clearly be driven by... Other successful people telling people, hey, go look at this successful thing. That's what happened with Boatworks today. It seems to be driven by the YouTube algorithm plucking you out of some obscurity and putting you forward and center. And then, of course, a bazillion eyeballs are looking at you and you get a percentage of the bazillion eyeballs. And that translates over into subscribers. But if you don't get picked and you're not getting pushed out there, no one will ever find out about you. And it's entirely possible that in a... It looks to me like in a in a saturated market, maybe you just you cannot get noticed. You, you, there's nothing you can do to get noticed because all the other channels, good, bad, terrible, they are sucking up the oxygen, and you got nowhere to go. And uh, uh, and maybe the only way you get past that is time. So that's what'll be interesting over a year from now. Kind of see, hey, did we gain some traction just by simply outlasting everyone else? All of that is what led me to email the 36 other YouTube channels to see if I could get some ideas about what it was that I needed to be doing to make the channel more successful. Of the 36 channels that I contacted, 13 of them responded. The other ones couldn't be bothered. They didn't even acknowledge my email. But for the 13 who did respond, many of them went into quite a bit of time and effort looking at my channel, giving constructive feedback, trying to give me ideas about how I might be able to improve what I was doing or take the channel to the next level. I want to say that at least two of the channels, they really spent a lot of time talking with me. They were a fantastic sounding board. From analyzing the comments that everyone made, from looking at their channels and kind of doing a deep dive into what was working, what wasn't working, it caused me to come up with six of my own ideas as to what really makes a sailing, boating, boat restoration channel successful. And it doesn't have a whole lot to do with YouTube wisdom. The first thing is whether or not another big name channel recommends you. Now, it certainly happened in my case. It's happened in other channels' cases. It may not always be obvious, but many of the content creators out there have worked on multiple projects over multiple years. And what you may be seeing successful today, well, that's an offshoot of something that they did earlier on or through some connection with someone else. The second thing that really makes a big difference is if you have any sort of outside media. If you end up on Good Morning America, if you end up on the BBC, if you end up on your local evening news building a boat or doing some sort of crazy restoration, well, guess what? You're going to hit it big time. That outside media really, really helps. The third thing that makes a big difference is the exploitation of social media, in particular, Facebook and Instagram. The channels that were quickly successful, they really employed an aggressive Facebook and Instagram strategy, and they were using it today, just hammering away, growing their following. One of the most important things that seemed to affect the success of a channel was what I refer to as the fantasy spectacle. This is the fantasy that you want to watch on YouTube. This is the spectacle that you're desperate to see. An inexperienced boat builder building a boat that they have no idea about. A young couple, they're living their life, they're dropping out of society, they're gonna build a boat and sail around the world and have a great time with the dolphins. This is a fantasy that everyone embraces. Rescuing a rare and unusual boat, anything from World War II, anything wooden from 100 years ago, all of these things People just love, it's a fantasy to watch it on YouTube.
What really makes a difference, what really causes YouTube to grab your channel and put it out there for everyone to see, which is to do what works. In fact, some of the other creators, they suggested this in their feedback, which is to kind of do what other people are doing that's successful, will basically copy them and keep doing it. This is great if you're interested in putting out content like everybody else, but if you're trying to do something different or if you're going in a little bit of an original direction, this is really not going to work. The last thing that makes the ultimate difference to the success of your YouTube channel, the thing that supersedes all other suggestions is time. If you're first to capture a market space, if you can last more than five or 10 years, you will eventually get all of the subscribers and all of the views. I have to say 300 days later, this has proven to be true. The longer I appear to stay on YouTube, the more the channel seems to grow. And while it's related to episodes that I'm releasing right now, it's also related to some of my earlier episodes somehow becoming more and more popular and the channel is growing. Now I can appreciate that some people don't agree with what I'm saying, but check this out. In the time it took for me to make this episode, I released another one about the Skipper 20 sailboat. Relatively speaking, that video outperformed all of my other episodes combined. In just two weeks, that video earned 14,000 views. It's gaining dozens of subscribers daily. Why? Well, simply put, it's because the video engages the fantasy spectacle, the fantasy of sailing a small boat across an ocean, the unusual boat that you wanna see restored. It doesn't hurt that I promoted the video over a dozen Facebook groups and my channel is now over 400 days old. In just over three weeks, this video now has 65,000 views. It's been put before the YouTube community almost a million times by the YouTube algorithm. Let's be honest, this video is essentially an unpacking video about an old sailboat. The success of this video is entirely related to how much YouTube puts it out there. It has very little to do with the quality or the content or really what I'm saying. It's about YouTube pushing it to people thinking that's what they wanna see. Which comes first, the video you wanna see or the video YouTube tells you that you wanna see? And if you can't tell YouTube what you don't wanna see, are you really getting to choose what you're watching? I tell you all of this because somewhere out there is someone else who's thinking about doing a YouTube channel. They're gonna be doing some sort of boat building or boat restoration. And like me, they probably thought, well, I'll do a channel, I'll make it better than all the others, and somehow I'll have some immediate quick success. And the reality is it just doesn't work that way. There are other things at play behind the scenes and it really has nothing to do with your effort or your quality of what you're producing. The concept of the channel, number three is what is the concept of the channel to date? Well, I'm gonna tell you, the original concept of the channel was I gotta work on the boat and I'm restoring the boat because I wanna get it done so that you know my wife and I can go cruising and, and we got some very specific cruising plans. We wanna take the boat, you know, do the loop, do the Pacific Northwest, do the Sea of Cortez in Mexico, uh, do the Thousand Islands, you know, and, uh, and, and then maybe take the boat to Europe. That's what I'd like to do. Do all the canals through Europe in this boat. I think it would be awesome. And I think it can be done, I'm just not sure how. And uh, the concept was, I want to film getting the boat, you know, putting the boat together and getting it done. I want to have a, a documentary record of me assembling this boat for my, for my children, for my heirs, for, for uh, you know, my great, great grandkids way down the road. Let's say they can have a video of how I put this thing together. And, uh, um, and that was the original plan. Kind of like, and I told somebody this, this is like, you ever, you ever go into, you're in a big city, you do a tourist thing in a big city and they'll have a street painter, they're painting something on the sidewalk or they're doing some kind of thing and everybody stops and watches the painter paint on the sidewalk and uh, maybe you learn something, maybe you don't, but you're basically watching a live performance of somebody make something. And that's what I wanted this to be. That's what I envisioned this thing to be. And uh, very early, I was informed by people, oh no, that's not what you should be. What you should be is a how-to channel. And uh, this is really education, it's a how-to. You're showing people how to do things. 
And, uh, and initially I resisted that. I, I'm not a how-to channel. I'm just a guy doing this thing. I don't want to get pigeonholed into the idea of now I got to show you how to do things, this and that. Well, now we've come to four months of me doing this and that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm the how-to. Oh, I'm doing how to install a hatch and how to do repair teak and how I'm doing this, how I'm doing that. It's very how-to. It seems to me that the channel has kind of found its footing in that I show some detailed projects, things that are not normally covered on YouTube insofar as boat building and boat restoration. And I tell stories of boat motivation about how I'm keeping myself going to keep working on this kind of large project. And I don't think anybody else is talking about that. And I think that's what the channel is about. Yeah, it's sort of how-to by a guy who doesn't really want to do how-to. But, you know, I think, and I'm told that people are getting some value out of it and they find it interesting. That's the channel. That's what it's become. Who knows what it will be tomorrow. So question number four, what is my motivation level so far? So this is a great measurement at this point. You know, I would say on a scale of one to 10, my motivation level is about a six. Um, there are several things affecting my motivation level in insofar as doing the YouTube channel. The first thing is, is that I am spending a lot of time making videos and not a lot of time working on the boat. And uh, it's frustrating. Uh, it's, it's frustrating. On the one hand, I want to do the YouTube channel and I don't really want to... I, I wish I could do the YouTube channel and not care what people think. But I care what people think. <laughs> I care if they like it. I care if they like the content. I'm very competitive. It's, it's frustrating. And uh, I think... Also looking at my competitors, my peers that are out there in YouTube land doing boat restoration videos and boat restoring lifestyle videos and what have you. I, for the life of me, I cannot understand how these people are <laughs> being successful. I, I, I don't get it. It's very frustrating and it sucks the life out of my motivation. And, uh, and I think about it and I think, you know, it's just, it's just, is it really worth it? I should just be working on the boat and make no mistake about it, they are competitors. Weekly, I get notices from YouTube comparing my channel to these other channels with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. YouTube compares our thumbnails, our watch times, our click-through rates. We're all competing for your time and eyeballs. I've watched several videos where people said, look, do not stop before you get to 100 videos. And they don't mean 100 videos, including the shorts. They mean 100 actual episodes. I don't know, 100 episodes is a long ways away. I mean, part of it is just numbers. If there's 52 weeks in a year and I release one video a year and I, don't, and I take off two weeks, that's 50 videos a year. So by the time I get 150 videos would be three years in, I want to have this boat done by, you know, 24 months, three years. I'm already four months into it. Well, first of all, there's more than 150 episodes to show how this boat gets built. That's the first thing, right? Which means if I get done in three years, there has to be more videos released than just one per week. Maybe two per week. Maybe you double it. But even then, I don't know. And... Uh, I don't know how to release more than two, more than one video a week. I, I just don't have enough time in the day. I can't be the guy doing the videos, doing the editing, doing the writing, doing all the things to keep the YouTube channel up and running. Merchandising, stickers, and graphics, and all this kind of stuff. Plus, come on the boat and build stuff, source parts, put it all together. There's not enough time for one guy. So, I, I, that's, that's the 40% that's pulling me off of, am I going to keep doing this? I, I, I got to be honest. Suck it up, buttercup. I mean, I chose this. I built the shop. This is my project. This is my YouTube channel. You know, uh, I find myself complaining about it quite often, but they say that a Marine is not happy unless they're bitching about something. And so I like to do a lot of bitching. Nothing worth doing was ever easy.
That was my motivation level. Number five, let's talk about plans for the future. This is the last question. All right, that's enough. The plans for the channel are, I'm gonna keep going. The crazy thing is that I really enjoy making the videos. And because I make the videos, I wanna do more projects. And the more projects that I do, the more videos that I wanna make. For me personally, it's kinda of like a positive feedback loop. I really kind of enjoy the whole process. I wish there was more time in a day, but what are you gonna do? We're approaching phase two on the boat. It's really gonna get interesting with the systems and the new engine and all of the things that are gonna go back into the boat. And I think this thing is gonna come together before our eyes. I hope you stick with me. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated.